Oh god, that game! <laughs> <laughs> I have spent so many hours sharing my hair out for that one. Hey, uh, other than the first loop as a Deku, uh, that game can be beat in like, what, 15 minutes or something. Wait, what? what, 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 what? It took over 20 years. But in, I think it was 2019, like late 2019, uh, someone found out that you could use some sort of glitch or exploit or whatever and warp right to the moon. Uh, yeah, after you do the loop as a Deku and you're a human again, you can go to Iconic Graveyard by bomb jumping over the fence. Uh, you get to the graveyard, you go into the one grave that's open on day one, and then you can use like a bomb jump or whatever to get to a different part of the underground of the graveyard. And there's a chest there by like a loading screen. And if you do stuff just right, you can get whatever items you want. But I don't know the exact specifics of it, but you do the same thing as you do in Ocarina of Time, which is basically just write code into the game and then force the game to read that code. And so you write in a uh, coordinates and you write in this doorway leads to these coordinates. And the game says, okay, this doorway leads to the moon. Does does it wait? Does it work on the? Does it work on the 3DS version or just the original and 64? I don't think it works on the 3DS version, but also yeah. it's like super like technical and stuff. Like it's actually possible with a real person on real hardware, which is completely insane. Oh, okay. When people are talking about yeah. rewriting code into the game. But it's indeed okay. possible to do, and it took like 20 years for people to find Moon Warp, which I first found watching a GDQ uh, gameplay of it, where someone was doing an all masks run. They got the last mask, and they're like, oh, well, now we have to uh, go to the moon and fight Majora, you know, just to uh, complete the run. So they walk into a wall, basically, and then they appear on the moon, and they're like, all right, let's fight Majora now. And it's they're so nonchalant about it. Oh wow! It was like I, the um, first GDQ run of Majora's Mask to use Moon Warp. <laughs> yeah, I I don't have that'd be fun to try. I don't have uh, I don't I don't have the original. Uh, I don't have an N sixty four anymore. I do. Um. <sighs> I wish. It was technically my brother's uh. N64 when we had it. Um, but, like, I played both Ocarina of Time and Majora's mm. Mask all the time on it. I would. I think I had it set up in my room once. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, the NES was technically why. my dad's, but I inherited it from him. Which is. Yeah. We used to have a well, lot of fun playing like, Double about, Dragon. That was another thing about my like parents is like I feel like they treated my brother better better than me because I was the older child. They'd always buy him consoles, and I had to save up for my own. And one year I said, "It's like I think one year I told them I like I really really want a PS2," and. I I wait till um I wait till Christmas my brother opens up the N sixty four and I'm like oh, I'm so I like thinking to myself, I'm so getting a PS2, I'm so getting a PS2, I'm so getting a PS2. And then you didn't. I got a whole bunch of software. Um <laughs> basically like flash uh, you know the program Flash Rip? Uh, Don't think so, but you got like pirated stuff? Well, Flash. I just said R-A-P because Flash is dead. Oh, okay, okay. I thought you said like Flash Rip. Like it was pirated stuff that used Flash. Yeah. But, yeah. No, like Adobe Flash. Before it became yeah. Adobe Flash, it was Macromedia Flash. So that's what 
I got that that in Macromedia Dreamweaver before it became Adobe Dreamweaver and Fireworks and all this, except I didn't want that stuff. Oh, how ungrateful, them, blah, 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 right? Yeah, it, because, it was because I took an uh, animation course at one time and learned Flash and expressed liking it. I, I do like... But that's not what you wanted do, for Christmas. I do like that stuff, but that I don't want stuff that will... <laughs> I, I didn't want stuff like that for Christmas. I wanted fun stuff to kill time with. By the way, Cinnamon is back. Just for the record. What's that? By the way, Cinnamon is back. Sitting on the desk, just looking up. I wonder if he can somehow hear the conversation. You can hear my half of it, at least. <laughs> he just gave me a look that's like, yeah, of course. <laughs> but, <laughs> this cat that's is a cool attitude. name for a kitty. What's up? Sorry? That's a cute name for a kitty. Oh, yeah. Well, I call him Cinnamon for short. At least. Bonk. <laughs> yeah, no, don't break the monitor, Cinnamon. Uh, yeah, looking back on it, I think I was like the spoiled kid growing up, but I didn't have any siblings like... Uh, when I was like a uh, baby, uh, my dad had a NES, so my parents and I played games on the NES, which is, you know, that was the thing that they already had, whatever. When I was three years old, apparently, they got me a PlayStation, because I always made them play games with me on the NES to, like, read them for me, because I was three, I didn't know how to read. And they thought, hey, if we're going to have to play the games anyway, we might as well get the latest thing. So they got me a PS1, and then I stopped, and then I learned how to read and stopped uh, making them play with me. <laughs> I learned how to read by playing video games. <laughs> Which I think is the important part here. That's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, so when my uh, stepmom's kids were like five or whatever and learning how to read, I'm like, why not just play Spyro? Just have them play Spyro. They'll, they'll learn. I did. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so my little brother, like, wants a Switch, but he doesn't, like, super want it, but he's, it's like, I bought my Switch over and he played it for a little while. It's like, oh, yeah, this is kind of cool and stuff, so mom doesn't know if she should buy him a Switch. It's like, well, it could be, like, a family Switch that's, like, like whatever, because, like, currently, um, when they take my little brother out somewhere, he just brings his iPad, and he's been using an iPad since he was a baby. Like, that's what he was based on, uh... Specifically, iPad 1s. Like, it got, oh. like, broke at one point, because, again, it's, like, over a decade old, and they managed to find, like, an old iPad 1 to buy and replace it. Oh, wow. It's like, you could have gotten a newer thing. Actually, I think they might have replaced it with, like, an iPad 2 at some point, but still, it's an old iPad. It's like, he is, like, 9 or 10 now. Like, if you do get him a Switch, like, then you could bring that on, like, car rides into town and stuff instead of the iPad. It's like, oh, but he's fine with the iPad because he watches, like, movies and stuff on it. It's like, that's fair. By the way, the Switch has Bluetooth, which apparently it's always had Bluetooth, but it was only actually revealed that it had Bluetooth recently because of some sort of software or whatever locking out its own Bluetooth functionality. And then Nintendo was recently like, oh, by the way, we're letting you use your Switch's Bluetooth now. You should be happy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Like, I don't know what happens. I don't know what's going on. I All I know is I know nothing. Aww. 
But yeah, I I think I've done well to keep up the uh, cool older sister role in the family as much as possible. Like, little brother wants the a computer. Older. Yeah, the cool older sister. Little brother wants <laughs> a computer. It's like, oh, I can make you a nice one. What's your favorite color? Blue? Boom, it lights up blue. Yeah, uh, light up computers are gosh. awesome. Mine, mine's got uh, mine's got RGB. Uh, well, the fans are RGB. I'm eventually gonna, I'm eventually gonna upgrade like a bunch of the internal components to RGB. Yeah, I had this um, little computer. I just want, with RGBs. I just it's... A computer that looked cool. <laughs> the only RGB in my main computer is the RAM. And since it's like obstructed by one of my monitors, I can't really see it when it's in use. But when I turn off the lights, the uh, ceiling above it goes rainbow. So that's pretty cool. I think I paid slightly extra for the rainbow RAM too. <laughs> Just for a good quality name and light up RAM. But yeah, I have this uh, little computer that uses, um, that has a lot of RGB fans and whatnot in it, and that was fun to set up. And I actually mean it was fun, I'm not being sarcastic, it was fun. Okay. Uh, a lot of cables to move around, but I did a good job of it, and also, right. I mentioned the Nintendo that I used to play with my dad uh, a lot. Uh, about a year ago, he was messaging me saying that he needs a new computer for work. Or, well, he needed. He... So I'm like, okay, I can make something work out. I could totally, like, arrange a... Uh, get the stuff, arrange a trip down to meet him. And we can work on making it together, you know, father-daughter time. We don't get enough of that, that these days, considering we don't live in the same town. And we could just, you know, build him a work computer together. But, instead of just a regular old computer in a regular old case, take someone's old uh, broken N64 and build a computer inside it. Sorry, not N64, Nintendo, NES. And build a computer inside a Nintendo. Wow. Yes, as a sort of, hey, this was like your first uh, gift to me. You know, uh, let me like play on your Nintendo and stuff. I would like to uh, like spiritually give it back to you. Give you a Nintendo. Oh, wow. But your Nintendo can like go on the internet and may or may not get a disk drive and like whatnot. <laughs> Even though yeah, my dad went and good. lost my copy of Nikolai's Pirates, which I haven't forgiven him for. And if you've ever heard of that game, I'd be truly surprised. Of which game? Nikolai's Pirates. No, actually. Yeah, I have not found anybody outside of my family who has ever heard of the game. Because it was like some... Oh, okay. So you said if I knew it, it would be surprised. Yeah, I'd be surprised if oh, you knew okay. about it, because I yeah. haven't heard of anybody outside my family who's heard about it. Because it was some, like, stupid little game that you got, like, for free as part of a whatever blah 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 other thing. Way, way, way back in like maybe early 90s or in the 80s or something. So super old game, but it was fun. And I played it a couple of years ago. And it's like, yo, this game is fun. Like, yeah, sure, it shows its age at some points. But like there's like this little mini game where you're a ship and you have to try to move around. And like you're moving on this sea and there's other boats moving around. And you have to try to like face your side towards them and fire your cannon and manage to hit them while you're all moving. It's like, that actually does hold up as a pretty solid minigame today. Uh, unfortunately, it was on a oh. uh, disc, because of course it was. I have not found a way to be able to download or torrent it online, because I have looked. And I had it in a disc, and I had it in an external disc drive. 
And then one day, my dad basically... And one day, I come home from school, and I was, hey, uh, my disk drive is gone. I asked my dad, he's like, oh, yeah, I need it for a work thing. It's like, okay, but what about the game that was in it? Ah, uh, blah, 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 whatever. And, like, I asked him about it a few more times. Like, hey, what did you do with the game that was in there? And it's like, oh, I'll get it back to you. Whatever. He's since moved since then, and I still haven't gone back Nikolai's Pirates. Aww. So, like, and unlike games like The Logical Journey of the Zumbinis or Ned's Nightmare, I can't find that game again. Logical Journey of the Zumbinis is available on Steam. Ned's Nightmare, I'm sure I could probably download it somewhere. Uh, Goemon's Adventure, I can get a ROM for that. Nikolai's Pirates is basically unavailable because nobody cared enough for that hidden gem to, like, store it away in some permanent matter. Oh, yeah. So. That's, uh... I should go and look for it again and absolutely have a series of just playing through Nikolai's Pirates, which, by the way, is a game that I'm still pretty sure I have never actually beaten. I played it so much with my aunt, and I think we made it to the last level once, but we never... Right, we never actually beat it. It also had a puzzle so that I have never once ever seen in any other game ever. Which is kind of shocking considering that was a pretty good puzzle. And people copy off of stuff all the time. I was expecting like some stupid Flash game to have. No. Literally no other game has ever had that puzzle again. And it was a good puzzle. Yeah, sure, if I played it now, it would be easy. But it was still, like, good in the way it was designed. It was, uh, it was a 2D thing, uh, a grid-based. I'm trying to remember what it was, but I haven't played it for over 20 years. I just remember... Uh, uh It was, like, one of those, you know, 2D grid-based games where you have to, like, oh, you have to go over here, get the key, then you can go over here and open the door, blah, 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 do that. But it had gravity, so instead of it being flat 2D, it was like up and down 2D. So you actually had to... So instead of just like, oh, I'll walk four spaces up, walk two spaces right, grab the key, boom, boom, boom. No, it's like, oh, okay, I'll go to the right, and I'll throw my rope up so I can climb up here. Uh, push a board along, and then it will fall down. So it's one of those simple, like, grid-based things that you see all the time. But it was, like, vertical. It had gravity to it. Which is something I haven't seen. Okay. I, it looks really cute. I'm looking it up. Oh, you're looking it up? You can see stuff about it? I, I think. Yeah, it is. It's got a little cute, like, cat pirate and this girl, Captain. No, the uh, oh, the main yeah. character is Nikolai, who's, like, a five-year-old who, like, thinks he's a pirate or is a pirate or has a pirate ship or something, and it's like, I think it's like a teddy bear or something, is his co, like, is a right-hand mate or something. I actually went as uh, Nikolai for Halloween once, had a whole, like, pirate get up. Aww, cute. I'm sure those pictures still exist, and no, I'm not giving them to you. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want those pictures, you're gonna have to pry them away from my mom. Because I'm sure she has them in a photo album <laughs> in her basement. I'm just imagining my future wedding and then like somehow on like a projector screen there's like just me as like Nikolai. Little blue pirate outfit, five years old. And whatever. It was a fun game and I totally... Uh, I'd totally just play through that just for the hey of it even. And obviously, yeah, play it for the channel, but I even play it without the channel, because it was just good. It's a great memory. Actually, what I would absolutely love to do is get together with my aunt and play it with her and, like, put that on the channel. Because my aunt doesn't play video games, uh, because I think she said that they're too confusing for her. Any games beyond, like, Spyro. She's like Spyro. She mentions that she can play Spyro, oh, okay. but games, like, beyond that are, like, too much to, like, keep track of. 
but we played a yeah, lot of like Nicholas Pirates. My mom too. She just like kind of plays like puzzle, puzzle games, specifically word puzzle games. Yeah. My mom like, will word... play video games, but she won't play video games on her own. But if like Chase, my little brother, wants to play something with her, and she has time for it. She'll sit down and, like, they'll play it together. I have a picture of the two of them playing Kung Fu Panda together. It's so cute. They're, like, both intently focused on the screen to the point they didn't even know I took a picture of them. <laughs> I- oh, right, I got my mom to- uh, to play a little bit of, uh... What's that? Before the Storm game? Something falls. Before the storm. Why Before the storm. <gasps> Wait. <sighs> yeah, Before the Storm is the prequel, but I forgot what... You're talking about Life is Strange. Life is Strange, yes. I got her to play some Life is Strange Before the Storm. And she was I all, like, a... iffy Wait. about it at first, but then we got to, like, the morning and, like, the stepdad is, like, belittling her... <laughs> Like, she's, like, playing through this. It's like, oh, yeah, you're, like, a teenager. Like, you should just understand your parents want what's best for you. It's like, okay, yeah, your dad is gone, but your mom still loves you, blah, blah. You should give your stepdad a chance. Then she meets the stepdad is, like, <laughs> and she's, like, no, screw you. <laughs> I was, like, oh, screw this guy. <laughs> it's, like, oh, yeah, now you see it. I just so, so, so want to get my mom to play that whole game. But, you know, she's super busy with everything. But just... Take a I, bit of time, play through it with her, and then have her play the original Life is Strange. Yeah, I I still need to beat the prequel. I have it on my PS4. I have beat the the original. Uh, oh, so good. It was so yeah. good. So sad, though. So fucking sad. Yeah, but, you know, the prequel you play as... What's it? Name? Gosh, I'm blanking. I remember Max and I remember Zoe, but I don't know if Zoe was an actual character or not. Chloe, right? Yeah, Chloe, Max and Chloe. Chloe. So you play Chloe through as Chloe and, with uh, like. Max. Yeah, Max is the best friend who isn't yeah. in uh Before the Storm. Yeah. Uh, you know, Chloe talks about her. It's like, how could you leave me after my father died? Kind of stuff, and like. But going into it with that as your perspective, seeing Chloe's side first, and then watching. Life and then playing through Life is Strange, it's like, oh, Max, and you've come back. And then seeing what happens, like, at the very beginning of the game would hit so, so much harder if you actually know who Chloe is, as opposed to playing Life is Strange first and just seeing, oh, okay, so what? Like, I want to get my mom to play through Before the Storm all the way and then play through Life is Strange just to see her reaction to the end of Life is Strange after first getting a close relationship with Chloe specifically. Yeah, you need the, you need the, the, the good, uh, the good ending is actually the sad ending. I don't think there is a good ending. There is no good ending. There is no good ending. There is no good and bad. It's just the needs of the many for, versus the needs of the few. The but the one. gayest, the gayest ending is the sad ending. I mean, I say that the other ending is even more sad, because you'll be turning back to the status quo, and what could be worse than that? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> uh, speaking of crow, Ruby is a good show. I believe you. Yeah, I believe more people should watch it. But Ruby? People, yeah, Ruby. I've been wanting to watch. I've been wanting. I've been wanting to watch that. You should. I think I've watched some of it. Start with the uh, trailers, the red, white, black, and yellow trailers, and they give you a good insight to the main characters before you actually watch the show, so you can get some, some uh, insight of okay, these are who the characters are sort of a deal. Plus, the trailers, somehow they do a magnificent thing with the show where, especially with the red trailer, for every volume of the show you watch, it answers something about the red trailer.
I'm I don't want to spoil oh, it all okay. for you, but ev I think at least the first seven volumes. I need to go back and rewatch volume eight, but I don't particularly want to watch that volume for reasons. Uh, no, it's a good volume. It's just, it's just sad. <laughs> Again, don't want to spoil stuff, but you know, life is strange. But yeah, basically mm -hmm. every single volume answers stuff about the red trailer and also answers some stuff about the other trailers. And for the record, uh, with the white trailer, yes, that is how she got the scar. Oh, okay. Which is... And, yeah, the white trailer is not actually answered in the show itself. It's answered in one of the mangas. Where I... Technically, this is some prequel information. But, uh... Little rich girl wants to go to combat school to learn how to fight. But she wants to go to a combat school away from home. And her dad is, is like, no, you can't go away from home to go to combat school. Like, what, are you crazy? No, I won't let you. Uh, so in order to convince her father to let her be away from home to go to combat school, uh, he has her fight... Uh, basically, it's a suit of armor. Uh, how do I say this without spoiling stuff? It's a suit of armor that's inhabited inhabited by like a bunch of ghosts effectively a bunch of very powerful ghosts are have possessed the suit of armor and she has to fight and beat it in order to be able to go to the combat school away from home that she wants to okay and that's the white trailer right there that's the uh like background info for the white trailer also, the music in Ruby is awesome. I have a friend who doesn't watch the show, but during our road trip, like, I think this month, last month, whatever, I played her some of the songs, and she was super into at least half of them. There's the... Okay. Yeah, there's a person on YouTube that I follow specifically because he's a musician that does uh, reactions to songs, and he was doing reactions to Ruby songs, and every single Ruby song he's absolutely loved. So that's cool. And like, Aww. and like every single Ruby song, except for one of them, was written by one guy. <laughs> and practically all of the music in those songs was also done by that one guy. Like all of like, you know, instrument and stuff. So, you know, that's kind of awesome. And yet people will uh, belittle the show. It's like, oh, well, this character was standing in this place. And in the next scene, they're standing in this place. Like, or like the next shot that we see them, they're standing over here. It's like, yeah, that's like a 30 second difference. They could easily have walked over there and they would have walked over there to get a better view. Or it's like, oh, we see this shot of this character and they have the hand on their cheek. And then it goes to like someone else talking and then it goes back to the character and the hand is like, down at their lap, it's like, yeah, after five seconds, you can totally move your hand from your cheek to your lap. That's not an error. That's just a thing that happened. Hmm. People want to nitpick, nitpick stuff about the show, but, like, most of the nitpicks are stuff that is absolutely legitimate. Um, This is one big thing that I want to talk about because I always have issues with people hating on it, but that's a massive spoiler. So go watch the show and then we can talk about the whole Crow thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you said you still have partners, right? Uh, invite one of them, curl up, watch some movie together. Okay. Make it like a date night sort of thing. Aww. I mean, I'd watch it with you if you wanted to, but we've already spent so long together. I would be down watching, so. Yeah, we can, I don't know, watch the trailers or something. Okay. Maybe watch volume one. It's like an hour, hour and a half. Cause, Ooh. Yeah, because Ruby started as a passion project of, like, one guy, Monty Oom. So a lot of the volume one episodes are, like, maybe six minutes long. Because it was, like... A group of less than 10 people working on the show. 
Like, period, uh-huh. is how it started. So, if they got a six-minute thing of animation done, and they managed to upload them on a week-to-week basis. And it's like, hey, for that few people and working with, like, no budget, that's pretty awesome. And then, the company uh-huh. that they were working at, their little company got more popular, and so they got to be able to, like, do more stuff and make more things and hire people to do more. Uh, to do more as to see as to go and look more like. Okay. <laughs> So it's uh So so the whole show has been getting um better and better. I think yeah, the animation quality improves with every single volume. Which is kind of impressive. So I'm looking forward to volume nine. Oh That's awesome that it improves upon it. Yeah. Again and again and again. Yeah. It's like, also, it is literally their motto. That's literally Monty Oom's motto. Keep moving forward. Oh, okay. That's cool. It's like, oh gosh. One of, most, practically all of the songs about like the characters of the show, and it's like from the characters' perspectives, there's one song that just hits out of the blue from Monty's perspective, his point of view from making the show, and it's kind of, uh, I mean, it's different, and it's... I don't know, can you use beautiful to describe a song? Because I'm going to. It's a beautiful song. Yeah, you absolutely can. Yeah. So I'll go and do that, then. I can stop this whenever. So we can end this whole... uh... Yeah, we, basically, we almost got four videos here. Awesome. I just need to, you know, edit them together because I'm not going to upload another three and a half hour video on YouTube again. I've done it before, but... <laughs> I think my controller died. So this is a perfect time to end and say... Farewell? You didn't really get to see that much of Rune Factory, but I don't know. I hope you do wind up getting a Switch and having fun with it. Oh. I do have a Switch. Oh, I thought you said that you were thinking about getting one. No, I said <coughs> that I recently got it, so like oh. I still haven't got all of the games that I want for it because oh. they're uh, all like ninety bucks a pop. Uh, so if you games. have access to a European bank account somehow, cause uh, you can get you, yeah, you can make a. Or if you have a way to get, like, European uh, Switch gift cards, which, well, anyway, because the Switch used to have a thing where you could, like, go online and buy uh, passes. So instead of paying, like, $80 for a game, you could pay $130 and get two tickets. And you could use those two tickets and exchange them for two games. So you could buy two games for $130 instead of $160. So it's a slight discount yeah. for buying online. Plus you get those coins that's like a 1% or so uh, price back yeah, or whatever. Yeah, I've got games with coins. I like yeah. that. I actually like that Switch has the coin system to get like free games. Yeah, you get like 1% of the purchase price back, whatever. So Yeah. Yeah, you can... But when I first got a Switch, they still had those passes things. And I was like, oh, this is awesome. I can buy games and... Th- they win because they incentivize me to buy two games when I might have only wanted one, and I win because I'm getting them for cheaper. So, okay, this is cool. And then they discontinued it in North America specifically. So now you have to have either a European or Japanese account to get that. Or you have to wait for sales. That's also a big thing to do. Just put all those games on the on like your wish list, and then you can just wait for them to go on sale because they will go on sale eventually. Hey, it's uh, Black Friday. They might be on sale now. A lot of them are, and you just play the games that you have until the new game, until the other big ticket games go on sale and buy them then. But yeah, you'd have to have a, like a European account and buy the games on the European account to get the discount, or you could buy physical yeah. copies of older games. Like, hey, I want Breath of the Wild. You can 
buy an old copy for like 20 bucks probably that's a good idea there you have to have like about. just buy if it's an older game you can probably just buy it in physical for a lot cheaper because you're not paying the new prices and it really doesn't matter buying the game used and that brings us back to the elitism point magic the gathering uh, people will absolutely hate you if you try to bring proxies into a game sometimes I've had people screaming at me right next to their sleeping baby uh, about me using a proxy for a card that they could see that I clearly had uh, sitting there on the table right next to the proxy so again in the interest like I was complaining about before of wanting to play games but having to play with people Magic the Gathering does indeed have some terrible people, and I- Oh, you mean, yeah, you mean having to play with the toxic people? Yes. Magic the Gathering has a lot yeah, of like toxic people. Yeah, like, when you people. were bringing that up, when you were bringing that up, I was like, that's what was going through my mind. I was like, yeah, toxic people take the fun out of multiplayer games. Yeah, I think this controller is like just. The controller says it's connected. It's not actually connected. I don't know what's up with this. But yeah. Like uh, the Command Zone Discord server, I wound up leaving because Jimmy Wong is extremely anti proxy. Uh, I got an argument with some guy who's like, oh, well, if I'm going to play with someone, you have to have spent mu as much money as I have to play with me. And, but it's like, Jimmy Wong, of all people, is anti-proxy. It's like, buddy, you get Commander decks for free to play for your channel. Don't you dare try saying that I have to pay money for it, stuff that you don't pay money for. Like, you're just a hypocrite. Don't pretend it's anything different. But yeah, I've been banned from so many... Uh, magic servers because people are just way too toxic. Oh! Yeah. That reminds me, I have one last story to tell for today. Uh, I was in the server way back at the start of the year and uh, there was an announcement that someone that this guy was uh, was now uh, a moderator. They weren't like looking for moderators, but there was an announcement hey, this guy's a moderator. Oh, also he's providing uh, prize support for our tournaments. So it's like, okay, he obviously bribed his way into being a moderator, so that's a big red flag. Wow. And I went into general chat and I said, uh, quote, hey, isn't that the guy we had that four-hour game with last week? Unquote. That's what I said. I didn't say, hey, this is he's bribing his way in. I didn't say bad stuff about him. I said, Hey, isn't that the guy we had that four-hour game with last week? Because it was. I had a four-hour commander game with him. Where he was constantly, like, looking up rules and arguing rules. And that's what made it take four hours. But wow. I just said, it's like, hey, didn't we have that game with him? And then, like, the, the owner of the server immediately, like, deleted my message. Like, immediately. Like, it flashed up and was removed. With... Well, at least within a minute, within seconds, sure. Uh, and then it's like, don't badmouth people like that again. Blah 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 blah. Uh, he wound up saying, "Oh yeah, the admins have had an issue with you on the server for a while now, and now you have two warnings because apparently me saying that I'd played a game with him on a server where we play magic games with people and are supposed to be encouraged to play magic games. Yeah, apparently that was a bad thing, so I got a warning for it." I had two warnings, because apparently the admins had had an issue with me for a long time that... Uh, and the owner of the server himself didn't want to tell me what the problem was so it could be avoided in the future, but just said, Hey, don't badmouth that guy. And that... Oh, and the admins have suddenly been having an issue with you for a long time now. And he... The way that he had, like, said it made it obvious that... Uh, when... Uh, the admins only quote-unquote realized that they had the issue with me when this new guy who had an issue with me became an admin. And so I had a whole wow. argument with the owner about, like, this guy is obviously bribing his way into being a moderator, and now you're telling him, like, 
who to like have in your server or not like this is not a good thing oh i know what i'm doing says this owner guy and he bans me from the server uh four or five six months later he comes up to me in a different server where i've actually worked my way up into being a proper mod of some form yeah. at least uh rules mod because hey i know rules of the game whatever and he s comes up to me and is like oh yeah Turns out that was a bad thing, as we all know now. It's like, dude, I told you that was a bad thing. Six months ago, I told you. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, but I forgive you. Now come back to my server. It's like, you're not going to say sorry? So he starts this whole argument how he shouldn't even... How he shouldn't apologize to me and how he's being so forgiving in, in uh, forgiving me about what I did wrong. Although he even admitted that he didn't even know what I did wrong. Or what... It's like, and that he, I don't know how he's being such the bigger person and forgiving me and stuff. I'm like, this is utter bull. Like, this is not how you try to apologize to someone, and it's not how you try to, like, no, make no. someone like you. And then the owner of that server that we were in came in, it's like, okay, listen, I see it's peated between both of you. I want both of you to just stop this. It's like, hey, Claire, I know that you're not the one starting this, but I just want to say I want both of you to stop please. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll drop, I'll stop it. And this guy's like, oh, are you gonna come back? It's like, nope. And then the guy kept like, ins and the guy for the next couple of days kept like trying to do big old posts in the server about it. He couldn't mess with me because I blocked him. And every time yeah. he did, I was like, I am not talking about this. We were told to stop. We were told to not, what? we were told to drop this and I am trying to drop this. The owner eventually comes back and s tells the other guy that he should stop or else he'll get, like, banned. It's like, no, no. The owner came in and uh, told us to stop this, so I am not going to argue with you anymore about this. I've answered your question. I've answered your other question. And I'm not going to argue about this anymore. Yeah. Good call. It's like, nope, nope. Sounds like it. I am leaving this. I think because I went Get back and like away. read. I re went back and read the logs, and he had said that apparently I have a tendency to that I uh, instigate people and make them angry, so that the people break the rules and I can get them reported for it. I was like, oh, could you give me an example of when I have done that? Like I was trying to be nice. Like I might have actually said, I am curious. About like, I was not aware of when I was doing this. Could you show me an example so I know to avoid in the future? And apparently he thought I was being sarcastic or something because he got, like, snapped back at me about it. So, oh, you know when it's happening. It's like, no, I have autism. I don't know when I'm doing these things. If you could show me what I'm doing wrong, I can do... Like, I tried to be nice and he wasn't taking it. And yeah. then later I was trying to be nice and he still wasn't taking it, but... And even in this server I'm in now, I got in trouble from someone who told me that I always uh give leading questions or something stupid like that it's like oh uh i am authentically asking you here could you give me an example of when i was doing leading questions it's like oh you know that you always do it it's like i'm telling you that, like i'm trying to be polite here I, but then i wound up talking to another mod in that survey is like yeah i don't know what's up with that guy uh this is what do they like, mean with like leading questions um the only thing i can think of is a question of the sort of when did you stop beating your wife oh okay like you know like it doesn't matter how you answer it either way is wrong like however you answer yeah. it is always is going to be wrong if you just directly answer it because it's not the question itself it's like what's being asked under the question and like yeah i have autism i don't try to do questions like that but apparently this one random mod said that I was always doing leading questions. Like, what it was, was, uh, yeah. there's an announcement that Golos, but, who is, like, possibly the most powerful commander, and has gone banned in commander because it's so useful, that Golos was going to be allowed, uh, like, re-allowed in the server to be used, even though it had gone banned. And the announcement even said, let us know what you think about this in general. So I went into general and said, like, yeah, I think this is a bad idea for X, Y, and Z reasons. 
And then I had like four people all on me arguing with me. No, this is a good uh, thing for exactly the reasons that I was giving on why it was bad. It's like, oh, it's super powerful because it does this, this, and this. And it's like, yes, it's super powerful. That's why I want to use it. That's why I should be allowed to use it. Oh, shoot, I'm on the wrong tab. And it's like, we're arguing the same thing, but I'm we're both arguing that it's too, like, much more powerful than any other commander. But I get, like, jumped on by four people at once and trying to defend my point. And, like, two of them are mods. One of them might have been even the mod who had posted it saying, Hey, let us know what you think in general. And as soon as I let them know what I think in general, starts getting angry at me for it. Like, dude, this was your idea. So... I don't know, apparently I instigated that by doing as was suggested and trying to be polite. Because as we all know, I can't be polite. I just instigate people and force them to break the rules so I can get them reported. Because that's me. That's all I'm good for. Make, uh, forcing other people to break the rules. Sounds like those other people are just like breaking the rules and blaming it on you. Yeah. But fortunately, in this server I'm in, there are a few mods who actually, like, know about me and like me. I think one of them, uh, has, if not autism, they have, like, ADD or something, so they understand. It's like, oh, yeah, dealing with people can be difficult and stuff. So yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, I'll yeah. talk with them and I'll make sure we're not going to, like, you know, kick you or ban you for any of this stuff. Like, so I have, like, one yeah. mod on my side, which is nice. And of course, on this server, I have a mod who's on my side if stuff happens, because I get a lot of people in trouble on our server. The server that we we're both on, I get a lot of people in trouble. On the one we're both on? Yeah, uh, specifically oh, yeah? unsolicited DMs. People I've never talked to before oh. message me, and I report yeah. them. But I've reported. I have a few. I have a few people I need to report. Actually, people yeah. who sent like friend requests. Yep. and I just take screenshots, DMing. send it to my like, mail, and it's like you know so how you know how I specifically said like no unsolicited messages for men. A lot of men took that. It's like oh, you meant every man but me, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've had that a few times, and in, in I, servers, I, I, to... I go to LGBT servers, or I went to LGBT servers that have a heavy focus on the LGBT community, and I said, "It's like, hey, I'd like to make some friends who are girls or non-binary, gender fluid, like whatever, aka people who aren't men." And then I get messages from guys like oh why don't you want to make friends with men it's like yeah that's the reason yeah, <laughs> yeah it's because of that <laughs> i've gotten so many like horrible like inappropriate messages from like men on like so many platforms that like i just yep. i i need to be cautious I say, uh, treat them the way that they want to treat you, and they don't care about... Yeah, if these people don't care about me as a person, then why should I care about them as people? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because, hey, I know what it's like to be around, like, teenage guys, and I know what it's like to be around adult men. My dad brought me camping with a group of his friends before. I know like the way that they talk with each other and frankly I want no part of that like I've seen my dad like driving around and stuff and like seeing girls who were who might have been 18 and saying some stuff about them uh mostly when I was younger but I remember that stuff and it's like okay like I know that I can't just blindly give out trust to people and I shouldn't be expected to. Of course, the whole thing also leads into when I find someone who I might actually like, I'm very hesitant to actually like them. Because uh, yeah. it's like, well, because I've had lots and lots and lots of cases where I, 
where I find someone and we chat and we get, get and we're like together and stuff. Um, and like, even when I express concern, it's like, oh yeah, I've had people I click with and then they kind of like just like drop off the face of the planet. Even, and then say it's like, oh no, I'm not going to do that. And then by the next day, they like never sign on ever again or they've blocked me or whatever, or they just completely ignore me or by the next day, when the last message that we, like, the last conversation we had was them saying that they weren't going to do exactly that. So how can I trust the next person to not do that? I and then people keep saying, oh, that. well, I'm different from them. It's like, yeah, prove it. I, I know that feeling. I know that feeling so well. I've had people who are like, basically, oh, yep. I'm never going to leave you. I'm not going anywhere. And then they do. I don't leave There's... people. And then like. And then the they do. And it's like. like possible yeah. convenience. They're gone. Yeah. As a writer. The first. Like the number one rule of writing. Is also a rule that can be applied to relationships. Show don't tell. Yeah. Yeah exactly. It's like yes. <laughs> Show your love through actions. Actions because show that you won't like, leave by not leaving. By not leaving, <laughs> it's like yeah, you can say whatever you want. I'm not going to believe you until I like get to know you. And frankly, don't try to paint me as the bad one here for wanting like, you know, comfort, wanting security and stuff. Don't try to paint me as being bad just for wanting to, you know, get to know That's someone what? before I try to. uh decide a future with them of course i also yeah. do the other thing where i just like uh plan out random futures with uh no premise to them because hey whatever it's stuff that's on my mind i think about a lot of stuff and i say some stuff that's the kind of thing that mm -hmm. i do by the way when i was talking earlier about being psychic and stuff i just say a lot of things and sometimes things come true and i'm also not using formula again that's bad but yeah i just say a yeah. lot of things and if a fifth of my things come true, and I've said a hundred things, I still got 20 accurate predictions. Like, whatever. Although I will say, yeah. I had a prediction about Ruby that wasn't just a wild prediction that I really believed in, and it actually did come true, and it was like such... It was like such a stretch, and it turned out to be accurate, and I still feel awesome about that. So what's up? What you talking about? What you saying? Oh yeah, I was gonna say like what are the, the last person that like basically did that to me? Yeah, and then people are like, well, I'm not that um, last person, so you should just believe me. Well, it's like, well, I I turned. Well, I I went to vent to a friend, and um, uh, actually I vented her because I knew she was like. She was like into my friend's partner. Mm -hmm. Uh, after like what she did to me, I was just like, okay, just be careful, make sure, make sure, um, oh, uh, make sure, um. Uh, Oh gosh! Make sure to be safe. What? Yeah, I basically like said that it was, it was like, oh, take care of hey. yourself. Be safe. Don't go uh, in over your head. Well, she turned around and was like, basically, uh, actually, I can read it out. I still have the conversation. What? Oh, you, oh, you yeah, okay, you were going to read it. I thought your friend was like, actually, I'm going to read it. I'm going to tell you what Wait. happened. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, this person also gaslit me so hard, this friend. Ugh. Um, so. Is it like an opposite of gaslighting where someone tries to make you believe that something, like, is true? Because I remember being, like, a kid and my cousin was, like, really invested in trying to make me believe that Hogwarts was real. Oh, wow. We did, like, mm -hmm. 
stupid magic tricks and stuff together, and he kept, like, telling me, like, these stories of Hogwarts, but it's, like, the opposite of gaslighting, maybe, or... Because he was just trying to convince me that something was real instead of that something wasn't real. I don't know. I feel like that's mm. still kind of gaslighting. It probably is, but it also, like, we were kids back then, so... Yeah, yeah, that's just kids being kids. Yeah, this person was like, okay, wait, R-I-R-C, she woke up late and missed a date because she used to date, she used to late afternoon being, oh yeah, this was after I was ghost, me me and Lily were ghosted on a, a group date kind of thing. We both got go. We or we both got flaked on, basically, Gosh, so that she Sarah, could then stay Lily, spend, how many... spend time with her crush. Uh, but yeah, she's like because she's used to a late afternoon being later, which sucks. But I mean, yeah. Also, it's like a two month long relationship that fails. Like shit happens. Yeah, this is what two she months told is like me nothing. After. Like, huh? Two months is like nothing. Like, Wow, why are you why are you invalidating my suffering? So like yeah, basically that was like the last conversation we had. I basically told her I'm walking away, you're not being a good friend. Why are you invalidating me? Because you've invalidated me. We got in a big argument and she tried to gaslight me by saying Oh, well, I was like, Violet was treating me awful. It's like, I saw you treating Violet awful. And I was like, oh, well, oh, please gosh. tell me what I did so that I can improve. She's like, People I'm don't... not going to tell you. Why are you coming to me like that? Well, why are you coming to me saying that I was being a bad person if you won't help me improve? I thought we were friends. This is, that is something that a friend would do. Make sure that oh, their friend doesn't really hurt good. other friends. This is something you would do for your friend to make sure that I don't hurt your friend anymore. If I'm doing she, something to she, your friend, you would want me to stop specifically what it is that I'm doing. The fact that you she doesn't, don't want she to doesn't say what it is makes it seem like I'm not actually doing anything wrong at all. She wasn't a good friend. She was one of those people that uses like being a dom as an excuse to just be, be rude. Treat people like shit also sorry if i interrupt you like a lot trying to like guess what you're saying but my mom and also like my mom's side of the family has this has a uh, some sort of memory issue and i have it somewhat too as you've noticed uh where they just kind of forget what they're saying mid-sentence so my mom will be talking and then it's like oh yeah yeah hey remember last week when we went to and then she'll just stop and there have been times where nobody does anything and she'll stop for like a full solid minute and they'd be like, oh, I forgot what I was saying. So I've just gotten used to talking with her. It's like, oh, remember last week when she when we went to the... And then she pauses. So I'm like, oh yeah, McDonald's. So so I've just gotten used to filling in what she's saying because she'll, she'll just forget what she's saying and then not remember it. And I just want to move the conversation along. It's like, yeah, McDonald's, I remember it. What about it? Instead of just sitting there waiting for her to say McDonald's. And then I do that with other people too when they're saying something and I think I know what they're going to say next. And they just stop. I fill it in for them just to try to keep the conversation going. But people have told me that it's rude. So sorry if it seems like I'm being rude to you. I'm just uh, just gotten used to trying to uh, finish other people's sentences. It's all good. We all have quirks. I have multiple speech impediments also, and it's one of my fears that one day I'll meet someone with a more pronounced version of one of my impediments, I'll try to talk to them normally, and people will think I'm a jerk for making fun of their speech impediment. I, uh, I used to have a pretty, I don't know if I still have a speech impediment, but I used to have... Like, I got tested, one. that's how I found out that I had two, not just one. Apparently, oh, okay. I have a, yeah, apparently I have a stutter that the person who did the speech analysis test, whatever, had never heard from anyone before. 
Because I start at the end of my wards. <laughs> oh, okay. And, uh... I ended up slurring a lot of words. Um, you should try not drinking so much. What's that? <laughs> it was a joke. You should try not drinking so much. <laughs> 